Yeah. I'd like to call the uh, November 15th regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees to order. Uh, roll call. Uh, June Cavallaro is absent. Joe Carroll is absent. Aubrey Strauss? Not absent. I don't mean you're here. Dan Viola? Here. Yeah. Jason Greenlee? Here. Nick Rico? Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. <coughs> and, uh, and I'd like to uh, congratulate you again on your re-election. Thank you. And, and, and Nick. And Nick, I'm not going to congratulate you on your re-election because, <laughs> because of what's going to come next. Yeah. Uh, next item is election of officers uh, and looking for a nomination uh, of a slate of Nick Rico for chairman, Aubrey Strauss for vice chairman, Jason Greenlee for treasurer, and Joe Carroll for secretary. So moved. Second. And you've been seconded. Anybody have additional suggestions for a slate of officers? Uh, I just had a question. Does Joe know? Oh, yeah. yes. No, he, he's not here. He should be a chairman. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, can, can so, yeah, the mo uh, motion, uh, motion is for Nick Rico as chairman, Aubrey Strauss as vice chairman, Jason Greenleaf as treasurer, and Joe Carroll as secretary. Been seconded. No one else has any other you moved it. adjustments? I moved it. Um, so before we vote, I'll just explain to folks that our recording secretary is not in attendance this evening, so the superintendent's doing dual service as as his superintendency and also recording minutes. So that may make things a little bit cumbersome as we go. We may have to slow down. Would it help if we sent a wet around the sign in sheet? Uh, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. So, all those in favor of the slate of officers as nominated? Uh, five yeas, no nays. Congratulations, Nick. Before you take over, I'd just like to thank the board for your support over the past couple of years. Uh, working with everybody has been a real positive experience, the cooperation um, that everybody has demonstrated, and uh, discussion and compromise has been great, and I really appreciate uh, the smoothness with which things have operated. So I just want to say thank you, and I'm sure that Nick is going to get the same or better cooperation. Than so why don't we change seats, Nick, and we can take over. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from October 25th, 2018, uh, regular monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. So, Mr. Greenleaf moved, and Charlie seconded. Um, any errors, omissions, additions? I found none. There was a comma that shouldn't be there, and that's all I have to do. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the only one I found. Okay. And I can have those? Yes. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Five yay, none opposed. <coughs> Number five, superintendent's report. Okay, a uh, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of October is included in the package. Our average effluent flow for the past month was 1.27 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 95% biochemical oxygen demand in the Louisville and 98% total suspended solids with averages of 12 and 8 milligrams per liter respectively. Uh, a copy of the pump station flows is also included in your packet. We had uh, some erroneous uh, flow data reports as uh, we've had in the past, and I noted the cause of those errant flow data in the spreadsheets. They were all either caused by power fails or plug pumps, which have all been addressed in the correct Cool. That's all I have at this. Any questions, comments for the superintendent? Okay, moving on to number five correspondence. Number six, sorry. Correspondence. So, uh, Glafot Insurance Group, uh, I gave you a copy of their uh, letter re 
resulting from the risk control visit that was held on September 27th. Um, as noted in the letter, the, di uh, the district does a commendable job with regard to managing risk. Uh, the one item that was noted required improvements in the proper use of fire doors. Uh, as a result of the, those comments, I had I, I met with the uh, fire department, um, walked through the plant, and put sticky notes on what were fire doors and what weren't, and uh, what was going to need engineered in, uh, uh, systems in order to keep them you know, to close upon automatically because what happens in the uh, various buildings, you know, the guys end up propping them open because they're just, you know, working in and about the they need the door propped open for a period of time and it never gets unpropped. So, as we discussed in the budget uh, workshop just earlier, I've, I've budgeted monies to purchase those um, uh, door closures and also to replace some um, doors that have been damaged over the years that need to be fixed. So, we'll be addressing that next year. Okay, any questions about the correspondence? Comments? All right, old business, number seven. Nine point. Hydrogen sulfide monitoring results. Can I say one thing? I'm sorry. Um, with regards to correspondence um, to the, the audience that we have here, I did receive your emails and I did forward them on to the trustees. Um, they all came within the last 36 hours. Uh, so they weren't included in the packet, the original packet went out of That's why it wasn't noted in, in that correspondence item, but it will, it will be discussed later. Um, fine point. Fine uh, old business. Uh, we continued our hydrogen. We continued our hydrogen sulfide monitoring program in the Pine Point area. Uh, these results are uh, presented in the table on the following page. Uh, overall, we've seen a noted drop in the hydrogen sulfide concentrations as the temperatures have dropped. Um, matter of fact, I got some reports today that. Um, essentially, all the monitoring locations are at zero. Um, so, uh, we'll be pulling these meters shortly for the winter and we'll be sending them out for maintenance and calibration and uh, getting ready for springtime monitoring. We'll keep this program. It seems to have been very effective. So, again, we've had no other complaints in that. that area. So uh, our our new control system at you know, Pump Station One mm -hmm. is that adjusted on a regular basis, or is that uh, how does that work through the winter time? Where we don't expect concentrations to be so high. It, 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 the, the new engineered system that adds oxygen mm -hmm. uh, that isn't up and running yet. Okay. Uh, we were as I uh, discussed. Uh, previous meetings we ran into some uh, construction issues with uh, uh, main oxy and uh, changed how they wanted to deliver oxygen and so that changed the amount of weight on that we had and uh, we had to add uh, 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 physical barrier wall between the generator and the oxygen tank. Um, so it, it's the way that uh, we're continuing with to work on it and inspect the controls, so we'll be wiring up. So that's never that hasn't been functioning this year. It has ne never been intended to operate over the winter because it is an outside piece of equipment that we freeze. And um, the results show that it's, it's not going to go right now. It's a warm weather problem. Yep. Thank you for the short answer. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to thank the superintendent for adding the thresholds to the bottom of the list. Yeah, I don't have to Google it every meeting. Yeah. Refresh it, yeah. Okay. I do listen to it a couple times. Uh, all right. Um, done with the older issues of Pine Point. We're going on to number eight. Uh, 677 US Group 1, which is the Pine Hotel. Um, Jerry, before, I'm not sure what it is. Um, as requested to connect the cottages from the prime, prime hotel to the sewer. Currently the house and the motel are connected. 
when the sewer was constructed, uh, two sewer stubs were provided for the property. One is currently being used to service the houses in the motel, and the second is currently unused. Uh, the private hotel has proposed to connect the cottages to the, to the second service. The house and motel currently uses approximately 1,500 gallons per day. Uh, the submeter for the cottages indicate the cottages use approximately 1,000 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following addition an approval flow of 2,500 gallons um, per day for typical sanitary waste for the house, motel, and cottages. I think it flows in excess of the approved amounts and characteristics and subject to additional approvals. And the, uh, uh, subject to a capacity reserve fee uh, for the flow attributed to the cottages, the current capacity reserve fee is $16.26 per gallon. Uh, so the capacity to serve to do is calculated based on the flow to the cottages. With that, the total capacity to serve fee due is $16,260 based on the leverage of the 2008 uh, fees, uh, which are adjusted monthly uh, on the engineering and the construction of cost of the And that fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer. Make a motion. Based on the caveat set forth by the superintendent. Second. Any questions, comments about the project? Got it, Jim. Oh, oh I'm yeah. not just wondering what the what the size of the stub is. Is it six inch? Yes. Any other comments, questions? Um, these are not year round. Residents. They are not. They are, they are uh, cottages that are seasonal. Um, and they're rented out on a basis. As part of the commercial? As part of the commercial business, yeah. Okay. And the, 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 the town has them listed as essentially a hotel. Yeah. And there's no restaurant or anything. I mean, they have coffee and danishes. And yeah, but not like a food preparation. Okay. okay. All in favor? None opposed. All right. New business. I want to confer with the former chairman. What is the protocol in going to this? We have a bunch of people here who would like this. Um, I brought that agenda. I brought Okay, here's the, the situation is uh, that we have an executive session on the agenda to discuss uh, uh, real estate transaction and also uh, consult with the district's attorney regarding a legal matter. Um, and I think uh, I think that we need to conduct the executive sessions before we do ID, which is the Verizon lease agreement. So, so I'm going to have to ask these questions. So, well, we don't have any place to go. So I think we, we, I think we have, I think we have yeah. to ask them to step out. And we apologize no for what normally what happens, just so you know, normally we're meeting in council chambers. And if you were in attendance there, you'd be sitting in the seats there. And we would leave the chambers and come here to hold our executive session. So we wouldn't be moving folks in and out. So this is an unusual situation we're, we're for us tonight and so we're apologizing to you for uh, the inconvenience of having come and go. We don't have any other place to go again. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just stand this outside and wait till you knock or yes. this, we'll let you this will this will probably be fifteen to thirty minutes when we get some work. Yes. Motion to go into executive session to discuss a real estate transaction uh, pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 4056C and also to discuss yeah, I was waiting for the motion so I can stop that. Uh, a legal matter pursuant to Title I Section 405 MRSA. <laughs> I'm calling this 
regular monthly meeting back in session after leaving executive session for a couple of matters. And um, I want to emphasize that we as trustees have received 19 emails that were forwarded us by the superintendent. The superintendent has, has received even more emails. And we want to ensure you, assure you that the record will show receipt of every single one of these emails in our correspondence. Want to make that clear. Um, actually, can I correct that? You you did receive was it, uh, seven. I don't know. I didn't count. Nine, Nineteen did. emails Someone via called. email, okay. but today uh, for the meeting at the beginning of the meeting, you, you had a packet of twenty-seven, I believe it was. Twenty-seven emails. So you are you have all of those in that packet? Yeah. Um, since putting the packet together, I believe I got three more emails. Um, Let the record show we've received about 30 emails. Yeah. They'll all be in next month's packet. Now, and I got one. If you'd like to see. And I received one as a text message, and I took the language from that text and emailed it to the superintendent to get it into the record. So that one also came in today around the right. Okay, so before we can... So we got them. They got them. <laughs> <laughs> and also there were phone calls that were received, and I have to apologize personally if there were any messages. I just got back into town late last night, and I haven't had a chance to review all of the messages yet, so well, I if apologize. You got, if you get the calls that I got, everybody left a message, but nobody asked for a return call. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> you may not have let anybody down. All right, great. All right. So um, this is new business, item 8. Letter D, Verizon Wireless Lease Agreement 415, Black Lightning. So, Dave, um, do you want to explain Verizon's request to us before we uh, sure. open the floor? Um, yeah, I did. I thought I did. I called the microphone. Open. Oh, yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. So, um, uh, Verizon. Verizon Wireless entered into a lease agreement with the district, I can't remember the date now, uh, for a specific parcel of land. They approached the district on um, leasing some land for a cell tower. Um, and we made it very clear to them back then that uh, if the town said, the planning department said they could put a tower there, we'd be okay with it. We're not going to get involved in the planning side of it. Um, so we, did, we entered into a lease agreement that identified a very specific parcel of land uh, where they ended up doing the uh, test and uh, took the simulations from. Um, they just recently uh, approached us after one of the, the uh, planning department meetings and asked if uh, the board would be amenable to amending their lease. And, um, and they presented two options. One was at the existing site uh, with some buffering in front of it. And the other one was, as you all noted in your emails, it's further tucked into the woods. Um, um, you know, did, uh, I don't know what direction it's, you know, you know all the wood it is. So, um, the, and so that's, that's where we're at right now. That's, um, and I'm going to summarize for the board and uh, for you, and uh, please correct me if, if um, uh, you'd be opening up to the floor. But as I say, uh, we received approximately 30 emails. They were all pretty much um, very similar in their response in that they, uh, um, they wanted the district to um, direct them, I'm going to say, to a, the, the, the more wooded site, the second alternative, uh, and also utilizing a uh, stealth tower, a, a monopole, I guess it's called, uh, and uh, painted strategically in some fashion. So that's essentially, that's pretty much what they all said. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. Really. That's where we're at. They wanted us to, you know, um, well, they asked me, and I said it's something I'd have to bring to the board uh, to see if they would be uh, amenable to amending the lease. So that's where we're at right now. Okay. Um, 
Okay, let me make it clear. We didn't drive this project. We don't care about this project. Either way, it can come, it can stay, it can go. It doesn't matter to us. We're not the ones that are planning it. We're not the ones that ask for it. And if it goes up, it's fine. If it doesn't go up, that's fine too with us. So I'm going to open the floor to public comments. What I ask is we do this in an orderly fashion, please. State your name and address, and then you know, we'll keep these comments hopefully short, um, so we aren't here till midnight. I appreciate that. Um, so we'll start with the, whoever wants to start. You start with me. Hi, my name is Tim Fahey. I live at Four Birds Nest Lane in the lovely town of Scarborough, and um, I just want to get some clarity if possible. Um, I attended the one of the first plant, one of the first town of Scarborough planning boards, and they started the meeting in a similar fashion, saying, "I want you all to know that this is the town planning board said um, we have got nothing to do with the district, the sanitary district. They made it. They made. They, they signed the lease, so the town is not part of that. We're just here to hear your complaints and that kind of thing." Is Verizon playing one off the other? I mean, because you guys are the ones who, for right or wrong, have signed a lease with Verizon and undertaken some sort of a commitment, I think, um, with them. And if your uh, true opinion is um, it can stay or go or whatever, I'd be uh, glad to just say publicly I'd love it to go. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Verizon has made a really strong, strong case that it has to be there and it's crucial for the local community and blah, blah, blah. It seems like um, there was a lot left up in the air a couple weeks ago when I last was witness to uh, the proceedings at the planning board. That's all. I'm not sure what the format here is. Do, do you discuss this or just everyone makes a comment? Uh, we, I guess we'd like to hear your comments um, yeah. and then we can we can respond individually or doesn't matter. Formally. I mean, I can answer it. You know, his question in that, like I said, we didn't start this. The Verizon came to us, and it really, it's truly up to the town planning board, and the town makes the final decision. No, I, I, that, that's, that was different than what they told, what they well, told me. Well, if I may, sure. Um, the town administers the land use codes of the town. Mm -hmm. We do not. Uh, we receive proposals for developments all over the town of Scarborough as uh, they're impacted by us as a public utility. So when a subdivision comes before us for some kind of development, we look at whether we have the capacity to service that particular project and what needs to be done to make, make our concerns go away from the perspective of the developer. But it's the planning board who is the administrator of the town's land use ordinances um, for uh, subdivision and site plan developments, not us. So we don't, we, we can impose additional concerns and limitations on a project as they relate to our business. But for example, Typically, we don't get involved with aesthetics and plantings, location of buildings and that type of thing. We look at the, at the sewer utility part of the project, and the planning board defers to our judgment on our facilities, and the rest of it is their responsibility. I see. When this project came before us, we were clear to, with Verizon that we were not going to advocate for their project, that, that it, it it really made no difference to us one way or the other as a, as a uh, provider of sewer services that we do we do own land adjacent to the to the treatment plant and some of it we don't have uh, an immediate plan to use the parcel that they proposed to develop on was not something that we had an immediate need to use and we didn't anticipate that particular component of the area is being necessary for a future expansion, and so we're willing to we're willing to issue them a lease to allow them to go forward and approach the town with their project. Oh, so so you have to have a lease 
to well, go in front of the planning board. That's, they needed an interest in the property oh, I see. before the planning board would speak to them. Oh, I see. So that's that's where that that's where that came from. But we are not an advocate for it. We made it clear to them that we're not advocating for their project. We were not going to be involved with the planning of their project and with the planning board. And that if the project was approved, great for them. If the project was denied, too bad for them. Mm -hmm. But we we weren't going to be persuaded to get involved and argue for or against their project. That was that's what the planning board's role is. They administer that ordinance, not us. So whatever the outcome of that is, mm. we're we're okay. we're willing to. The lady in pink. Uh, yeah, pink first. Just quick. I, this and your a, name is? Uh, yeah, Nina McKee, and I live on uh, 309 Black Point Road. Um, it doesn't make sense to me that this tower is going up, and Higgins Beach isn't going to help get help. I, I think um, Piper Shore, is, Shores isn't even going to get anything. Um, Old Orchard Beach and Saco so are going to be in good shape. And there are only 30 or so residents in the summer, at, I mean, in the winter at Proud Snack, so well, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I don't think we can comment on that. We haven't done any studies or been a part of any of the conversation with Verizon as to how service will be affected in that area. So it, it's, it's difficult for us to say, you know, people, I live on Black Point Road as well. Is my service going to improve? I have no idea. I, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far into the project to find out if, uh, you know, it's going to make a difference. but. I think to Charlie's point and to Nick's point as well, it, we can't make a determination on that. Oh, I understand that. I just had to say it. The gentleman standing had his hand up for a while. Hi, uh, Francis Weld, 3 Checkley Point. I uh, just want to say I would fully reiterate the statements of Mr. Fahey. If we can make it go, let's make it go. If you don't care, I think a lot of us do. Um, there are many other places where this thing could be cited. I know that's not in your purview. Uh, but our concise and frank opinion is that it is not only not necessary on Black Point Road, but a blight to the location and, and uh, just the wrong thing to happen for multiple reasons. Okay. And Mark Triple up to Sanctuary Lane. Uh, two, two points. Um, one is it's interesting that on one side the planning board has left you to negotiate the contract, yet the details in the contract, you have no authority to, the way that it came across, you said you're not responsible for buffering and for for uh, for the details, you just mentioned a few, but maybe buffering isn't one, but the, what you more or less insinuated was, the town tells you uh, yes or no, and they give you the details, and, and then you basically uh, sign off on the, uh, on, well, so that, that's, so the message that came through to, to Mr. Faye that I heard was basically you're, you don't care one way or the other. Yes. And there's, and then, but because you've negotiated a substantial contract. A We've lot of negotiated a lease yeah, for the use of our land by a private developer yeah. known as Verizon. With all kinds of detail in there, which, which uh, is a matter right. of public And that practice. was a prerequisite for them to go to the planning board at the mm -hmm. town to get approval of the project. Okay. It's not up to us to determine what's... Okay, so basically it's Verizon's... It's, it's Verizon's, Verizon's project. They're driving and it's their, basically their lease. They put the lease to you. Yes. That's useful for the planning board. Uh, one other is that we had a letter, and I know there were several other letters that suggested um, not only um, move it or color it, but um, postpone on a decision, uh, delay the decision, because basically the town may, or the planning board and the council may uh, be influenced at this stage to um, go back to the drawing board. That's not up to us. No, yeah. but that's what I'm just, okay. I, I know that. All I'm saying is there were requests for that, for the record. Okay, so can I just yes, speak? Before. That's all. I'm As an individual trustee, the only thing I intend to do tonight is tell Verizon that if they come back to me, to me as an individual trustee, as a member of the board, if they come back to us with a proposal for another location, I'm willing to talk to them about it. 
That's the only thing that I think I'm going to be saying as a as a trustee here tonight. That's all. So not going to not going to tell them. You're not you know, the details. Stick with stick with the option A, the original plan, or change it if they want to change it. I'm amenable to talking about the change and renegotiating the lease. That's all. That's all I'm prepared to say tonight. Okay. Bill. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so just want to make no, a couple of points. Uh, Chairman. <laughs> thank you. Your name. William LaCase, 52 Old Neff Road. Thank you. And first of all, I just want to say thank you for having us here. I know this is unusual for us, for you. And it's kind of nice to have a, a feeling, sort of a casual, compared to other organizations, <laughs> uh, conversation. So I certainly appreciate it. Um, I just want to make a couple of, of points, they might be valid, they might not be. The first one is, <clears throat> I understand your premise that all you're doing is, is, is creating a lease with Verizon that, that they can then go to the town with, but I, I don't really completely agree with that. I find it hard to believe that you would have signed a, a lease with a pig rendering factory or some other things that might have come within the uh, purview of what is allowed in zoning. Um, but is more obnoxious on its face, a strip club or whatever. So I, I find it hard to believe that you couldn't say to a company, no, we're not going to create a lease with you and then leave it up to the planning board and the town to decide what's going to happen. Now, having said that, we have a lease. And so, and I think uh, the former chairman, uh, you've hit really on why we're here tonight. Um, I think Verizon has <clears throat> sort of two proposals. One is that the lease is amended so that they can plant more trees on the site where their present plan is. I would ask you to say no to that because I don't think there's any way for Verizon to buffer appropriately in the site that they're now proposing. We then have the second site that has come up and I think most of us think that perhaps that could be with the appropriate uh, a stealth pole. Um, it could be buffeted. So in terms of dealing with Verizon, thank you. We would actually hope that you would go back and say to Verizon, we'll be flexible with you. And I think you know from the letters, we're actually negotiating with Verizon because we'd like this to be a win-win for everyone. Most of us would rather not have any cell tower there at all, but we recognize the realities. So in negotiating with Verizon, <clears throat> we would greatly appreciate it if you would let them know, and it sounds like you will, that we would be open to the new site for a stealth tower as long as it can be appropriately buffeted. And then, of course, it's up to the planning board to decide if that site itself can be appropriately buffeted. But I do think you have that flexibility, and that's really all we're here tonight in light of what the circumstances are, is <clears throat> to ask you no to the site they are, don't change the lease there and allow them to do other things because we do think it would have a very negative impact on the marsh. But be flexible of, about the second site. And I think in your lease you can actually say a stealth tower if you want to. Uh, and I think that might lead us to a place in this town where everybody feels comfortable and we don't face litigation that nobody wants to face going from here. So anyway, thank you very much for letting me speak. Okay. I'm Betts Armstrong from One High Point Road, and I have a question, which is, if you all allow them to go to the second site, which appears to be more buffered, would it be in your purview or the planning board to tell them that they couldn't then cut down a bunch of those trees trying to open it back up? And those trees are presumably yours if you're giving them the lease for the space. Um, would hate to have them build it in a more buffeted place and then have them take down trees to open it back up. Right. Can I respond to that? Yeah. So what happens is the planning board is going to approve the project or deny the project based on a detailed plan that Verizon submits to them. And if we amend the lease and negotiate an amendment to the lease, <coughs> it would be contingent on them complying with the uh, site plan that the planning board approves. The planning board approves the site plan with them clear cutting trees. We might react to that and say what the heck is this all about? Uh, 
um, and have some conversations back and forth with the planning board. But um, but if they're moving to a site because it's more heavily buffered with existing vegetation, it's hard for me to believe the planning board is going to approve a site plan that allows them to cut trees. They're going to cut. They're going to cut the trees they need to cut to build their project, but they're right. going to preserve. They're going to preserve the vegetation around them, or else what's the point? What's the point of relocating the building? So we'll be we'll be requiring them to adhere to the site plan provisions that the planning board imposes on them. So that, that would be our that would be the context of our lease. Would be you have to build what the planning board said, you, what you presented to the board, and what they approved. If they don't, if they if they go through and build otherwise, then it's going to be an enforcement issue with the town and probably with us with our lease because they'd be in violation of the lease agreement that they had with us that required them to comply with the town. I don't know. I don't know how that would play out. You know, that's a scenario that, you know, we can crystal ball and talk about what is all night long, but the assumption would be they're a reputable company, they're going to have to file a bond with the the planning board for the site plan development, whatever, and that they would do it in accordance with the plan that the, that the planning board approves. I, I think that, if I may, I think that piggybacking on Charlie's point, is there's a lot of question about the height of the tower, and I've seen a lot of discussion about that, and I think it falls under the same situation. If the planning board does not allow that tower to be any higher, or the trees be amended around that site, it, it can't happen. And if they do, they'd be subject to enforcement from there. That's a common misconception as well in terms of the height of the tower. The planning board is going to dictate the height of that tower and they have to adhere. We were told last, uh, Tim Fahey from uh, Fort Myers Nass Lane, we were told last time that the, um, by the Verizon uh, lawyer, uh, that the, uh, there's a federal law that allows a uh, bonus of 20 or I think it was 20 feet, up to 120 feet. Um, uh, should they quote unquote need it or whatever? So you pass it at 100, and then they have a, a free build option, whether you like it or whether we like it or not. It's federal, so you're going to salute to it and up the flagpole it goes. Um, I, I want to say uh, something with Bill. I really appreciate this forum and you guys' directness. It's a pleasure to see you guys and ladies um, to answer questions directly because it really helps a lot. Um, uh, there's two more points I want to make. One is, I'm not sure if you guys have been privy to what's been going on at the planning board meetings, but last time Verizon, um, it really gave me the feeling that I was, on a, that I was being railroaded, I, the town of Scarborough, um, when they said that they had, there were three things that they have to get over uh, to get this thing up. The very first thing is they have to demonstrate a need and allegedly, they made the assumption that the town board voted on a demonstrated need, and there was no such vote. There has yet still been no such need. So you haven't, you know, you, you said very smartly, oh, "Listen, I don't know what's going on on that side of the things. We're just here to do this type of, type of business. Keep an eye on uh, demonstrated need because it has not been voted on or proven upon. So that's so. We're, this all might be up in the air for that reason. And then the last thing I want to say is I learned uh, just staying in the hallway. If you guys are smart, what you might want to do is if you do, if you're going to build a tower and you have to do it, if I were you, I'd build my own tower, own the property of the tower itself, and rent the top of the tower to Verizon. Because then, if you if you own the tower, you have control over it. Okay, and then if you rent to Verizon, <laughs> then you have control over it, right? So you rent to Verizon. Then you'll really be mad at us because we built the tower. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then what happens is Verizon is just going to get, you know, that extra 20 feet. They can get two more, I think, a razor over there. And they get AT&T jumping on, they get another cell phone. So, so the planning board it. can approve a tower that's 100 feet high, and they get a 20 percent, 80 feet high, and they get a 20 percent, they get a 20 percent addition, and that gets them to the 100 feet they want. There's ways that the town can limit the height of what they're going to build with the with that 20 if that 20 percent I hope, I hope that's true well i hope that's true I'm not, I'm not i don't know sure. i'm you know i'm not in the land use business anymore all so. i know is that the, there's an opportunity to rent uh more rates that's what Verizon's going to pay you guys 30 grand a year and then charge 60 for the other guys yeah. so. and, and 
just to your point about us building a tower, we are in the sewer business, not in the plan. Um, so we're not going to do that. I also want to remind you that this is a utility we're talking about. Verizon is literally a utility. They provide phone service. We provide a different utility. Right. I just wanted to point that out. They're not big processors, which we would never allow, because they would just overwhelm our plan. So that's beside the point. Um, but I'll, I'll let you speak, and then the lady, young lady in green. So go ahead. Um. Hi, my name's Marvin Gates. I live at 423 Black Point Road. Um, I have a couple of points, but I'm going to jump on to that very last conversation about tower height. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say this, but I may be one of the few people in the room who's read every document, zoning ordinance, Verizon, RF engineering reports, all of them. Uh, I think you get caught going down a rabbit hole thinking about what the limit in height is. The only limit is 150 feet. Uh, if another carrier wants to come in, instead of building a new pole, for example, the zoning ordinance reads very clearly that you will co-locate on an existing pole. They want to reduce the number of poles. So whatever it comes in at, yes, federal law can mandate 20 feet higher. Um, I think you're making a mistake to think that you know that this is going to be some limited height unless it's 150 feet. I don't know. No, I'm, not, I I'm not trying to claim that I do, but I, I, I think you're kidding, not yourself, but I would be kidding myself if, if I thought that. Take it for what that's worth. I'm going to follow up on what Mr. LeCay said about what I think the consensus opinion of these residents is, uh, and of course, They'll correct me. We all have our own opinions. I'm not going to express mine exactly right now. Mine would be expressed uh, in terms of if we were having this meeting in advance of you signing the lease with Verizon, I would suspect everybody in here would say, don't do it. Please. And uh, we're not at July 2017, when I think you met and, and decided to go forward with this, were today. And I think we get into serious trouble if we were here trying to tell you uh, that you shouldn't sign a lease with Verizon. That's between you and Verizon and, you know, uh, not us. Uh, I do think if you can listen to the community based on what you were describing, Verizon's come to you with two proposals. One of them, as I understand it, is an easement on property, not leased, where they can plant more trees. Maybe I have that wrong. I'm not an attorney. I don't know. The other one is to move further into the woods, that we all know what that is. We will object, I think, to the idea of an easement where they're going to plant woods, meaning the current 75 by 75 foot site that's under this. We all have been to the, all the planning board meetings, or most of us have been to all of them, uh, some to a few. We understand that Verizon chose the site that you have leased to them because they don't have to go into the woods. They don't have to create a road. It's sitting right there. It works for you. It works for them. Let's do it. I think it's fair to say that the planning board has decided that it doesn't meet the zoning ordinance's buffering standard, surrounded by dense tree growth. Well, all of us can go to the site and say, it isn't there. And that's where, they're, that's where they are. None of us, if it were a year and a half ago, would say, please don't put the tower here. What we're saying is you're going to hear from us, I believe, on any option other than the one moving into the woods. So we're in advance of you having to make that decision. 
you're just at the point of we'll talk to you, Verizon. So you, you know, we're here in time to at least voice the community's opinion, and that's what we're saying. Okay. So. Plus, thank you. Plus the type of tower. Yeah, the, and there. Oh, wait a minute. Young lady have her hand up. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I guess I just want some. Hi, I'm Wynn Hannon, 588 Black Point Road. So your name again, please. Wynn Hannon. Um, I am curious. So there's the option. They have come to you to mend the lease because, as I hear it, the current um, site violates a law of buff for the buff uh, designated buffering. Is there an option of denying an amendment that that would therefore void a lease? I don't know if that's just to, I'm being naive in saying so, but it seems like if the original lease doesn't make sense, do we have to go forward with the lease? Well, then I, you know, right <laughs> I'm the oldest guy here, so I've been dealing with this kind of stuff for too many years. Well, this is probably the youngest person here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, not saying I'm older than any one of you guys, but I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest one might on the be. Yeah, That's about the best question you'll so, hear. So here we are on television, and I will have to say to you, look, there's an, there's an existing lease, which is a contractual agreement that we have, and so for us, for us, to, we, we, we probably need to be careful how we respond to the request from Verizon because if they come up with a way to make their, get their project approved on the existing site with the planning board, we have a lease agreement with them in place. And I don't know what their reaction will be if we, out of the blue, say, oh, by the way, we decided that we, we want to change the terms of that lease. And I don't know what we would have to go through. I just don't envision one legal fight with Verizon mm -hmm. about about that. So uh, I would I would want to be very cautious and get a lot of legal advice from our attorneys before we would just arbitrarily say, okay, we want to change the provisions of that lease. But in the lease, it's clear to them. It's clear that it's contingent upon planning board approval. Mm -hmm. And Verizon has approached us requesting feedback on whether we're amenable to modifying the lease agreement for option A or option B. And we can tell them that we'd be amenable to adjusting the lease in favor of option B, but that doesn't mean that we can dictate to them whatever they can do under the existing lease. So we might be able to try and steer them to option B, but you know, I I, I don't know that we can force them that way. And with regard to regard to the type of tower, I think that's totally the purview of the planning board to decide what kind of tower they're going to approve. I don't see us wanting to get into. I understand you guys have studied this to death and that some of you may be experts at it and some of you may not, but you all have strong opinions. And uh, and I think uh, I think in terms of our lease agreement, I don't see us dictating a particular technology or type of tower because we don't have the expertise to really claim that we know A from B. But that's uh, those are arguments they should be making to the planning board, who's the land use authority in the town and experts in the town, certainly more expert than we are as a collective board. And uh, so I guess that's enough said. And just to echo what has already been said, I would also like to vocalize that I'm in support of the second option of if this is something that goes through moving it into the woods um, and the stop the tower. Just that mark. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to clarify. Sorry, name is oh, I'm sorry, Lucy Lacase at 52 Old Man Road. Um, the we still. <laughs> we don't need to get into that. That's tough for our purview. Um, just to clarify, I think earlier you said a monopole. A monopole is different than a stealth tower. The original part they were suggesting a monopole, which has external arrays. So big antennae sticking off of it. The stealth pole that 
that we were talking about is like a big flag. It just it's all internal antennae. So I just want to make sure. Again, yeah, that speaks about. towards the fact that we don't know. Right, right. We don't. That's what I just wanted to make sure. And then there's the model pine that they've talked about, which is looks like a stupid pine tree. Yeah. Um, and so, so what we've been talking pine about. Is well, no, because this is not a pine tree. tree. Yeah. It's not a pine tree at all, and it's very obvious that it wouldn't be. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that most of us are of the opinion if a tower were to be built on power on the property, it would be a stealth tower, which would basically be just a tall. And Ben, you had a response. To that. Well, I just wanted to say that I think all your arguments are good, but as you just heard, we're not experts on these towers. We have no say on what yeah, this no, and I just like or what the what what the requirements are that the planning board's going to have. They would be the ones I that would that. that would oversee those rules, and it just puts us at if it was a sewer, we'd tell them what size sewer to put in there and how to put it in. But but with just towers. Yeah, it's no, not it was our, just, I was just clarifying value. so we understood the difference between the different. Yeah. And I just had one other question, if I may. Um, I think you've seen, you know, in talking about an alternative site, I know you had talked about maybe there was some expansion or development that you all wanted, might have for the future. Did you feel that there is it that that area of woods is would be available? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we discussed the potential future use of the property and what our needs may be in the future and uh, I think the consensus was among all trustees that any expansion of our plan or our facilities would not encroach on either of those areas. If that makes sense. Yeah. Hey Bill, you have another question. Again, it's uh, Bill McKay's 52 Old Neck Road <coughs> and as I listen to everything, I don't think based on where we are today there are a lot of disagreements and there are some ways that you can help us, the public of Scarborough. And you folks are obviously our residents of Scarborough. We have a lease, that's a fact of life. But you can clearly tell Verizon you will not make any amendments to the present lease or any changes that would allow them to build in the site where they're now proposing their uh, tower. And you can, and it sounds like you're willing to do, let them know that you're flexible about them moving the tower, which allows us to then negotiate with them, which is what we're actually doing now, and we're negotiating with them with the planning board. So those are really the two things that we're hoping to come out of here with. One, you're not going to make it easier for them to build where they already are proposing. And two, you will make it easier for them by indicating you're flexible to build in the second place, which allows us to then con to continue to negotiate, which we have a lease, so that's it. <laughs> but that is sort of a win-win for the whole town, you folks, the public, and the planning board. And the whole hope for everyone is that we come up with an agreement between all the parties so that we don't have litigation. Because if we don't, if it's not Verizon suing everybody, it's us suing everybody, and actually nobody wants that. And so I just, I'm just stating that because I actually think that what you do tell us you can do is very consistent with what we're asking you to do at this point in time. So thank you very much. I have one uh, small point to make in Marvin Gates, 423 Black Point Road. Uh, Following up on what Bill said, uh, if you've been to the planning boards, you would know that this community group and the broader group and the abutters group have retained professionals, uh, radio frequency engineer, landscape architect, to do the simulations, and uh, an attorney, of course. And the last thing we want to come in here as a group to ask you is something you can't do. You don't want to waste your time. Um, we're very aware the young lady's question was superb. It's the one everyone wants to ask. Uh, however, we knew the answer to it uh, in advance. And uh, I just want you to know we're uh, reasoned, thoughtful, educated. We don't want to waste your time. We want to focus what you can do and support it 100%. All right, one more time. Um, yeah, Nina McKee, 309 Black Point Road. So where do we go from here? What's, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is soon I'm going to entertain a motion to close this open session. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> and then we'll 
probably move on with uh, directions to the superintendent. Okay. I don't think we need a motion to close. I think we can just bang your one. Does anybody we have one more question? One more question. My name is Jude Hogan. I'm a whispering surf uh, lane. And I just want to point out there is a distinction between <clears throat> from the very early discussion of a development somewhere where the San Diego District has an easement on someone else's land versus this project, which is actually on your land, and which gives you a little more say. Now, you've entered into a lease, and you say Brian has approached you with uh, a comment about modifying, and you know, you're not without leverage to do the same back to them and approach Verizon with a request or, you know, in a, in a amenable manner to uh, uh, make a modification to the lease. Uh, that's all. But I, but I did want to point out that, you know, it, it, it's different. A development over there where you don't own the land, you have an easement, is different from having, say, you know, you can want... Uh, <clears throat> Be indifferent or disinterested in that uh, first case, but when it's on your own property, you, you are an interested party and uh, have a little more leverage about what what you agree to. And when you say, you know, it's, we're not for, we're not against it, Verizon puts you at a crisis point where you had to go one way or the other. You, so, I mean, you did approve it. If you had said no, you would have not approved it. So it, it, it's at the time I don't think it's it's wholly uh, indifferent. You weren't wholly indifferent. You, you approved it. You may not be advocating for it, but by having them forcing you to either approve or deny the uh, their lease request, uh, you, you know, they you, you had to come down on one side or the other. And I, I understand if you come down on the side that we would prefer, you know, you. you you would have been taking up, uh, not advocating, but choosing. Okay, so they didn't force us to enter into a lease. It was our own volition to do so. It was part of the whole planning process. They couldn't have gone to the planning board without it. So we entered into a lease. Anything, any farther, further discussion on camera in open session would not help in any negotiations on our part. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. I understand. I did this on the point of. Thank you. Anyone else have any more comments, questions before I close the session? Thank one, you. Thank one, you. One quick comment before uh, uh, thank you. When uh, the negotiations happened, when they approached you, uh, did you guys have, uh, or are you guys, uh, is it, did they approach this board? Or are you guys lawyers at all? Is anyone a lawyer? I am certainly not in Halfley, so, but. Um, <laughs> No offense, Billy. We did uh, five engineers on this board. We don't, yeah, need, we don't need a lawyer. No. <laughs> okay. Right. I, was just, I was just curious about, about that. Uh, we did, obviously. You can solve the attorney. We did. Yes. 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 Okay. This Thanks, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. The session, open session is closed. I'll take my questions oh, off the air. Yes, okay. I'm entertaining motions right now. Okay. Let me make a motion, but I need to know who Chip Project is. Is he is he a Verizon employee or is he a consultant for a Verizon or an attorney? He is a Verizon employee. He is a Verizon well, he's actually employee. a consultant. He is a consultant. Yeah. He is the, he's the site he's acquisition specialist for New Hampshire. But he's working for Verizon. Right. Yeah. Verizon's right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a motion to respond to Chip for Debt's request. Looks like an email request. Dated November 5th, 2018, to our superintendent, David Hughes, uh, advising him, as we understand that he's speaking for Verizon, since it's not indicated in the email, uh, that the sanitary district trustees would be willing to modify or discuss modification of a lease for the site also like to point out and include in that, that that such a negotiation would not necessarily be based on the same financial terms that were included in the original lease. Do I have a second? Second. 
Some of you say you have. You know that we don't adjust our rates annually, and that we periodically. The last rate adjustment we had was seven six, years seven ago. Years, seven years ago. Um, but now, as we look at our cash flow, uh, we're looking at you know up to a ten or twelve percent increase a year or two down the road. And my sense is that we should be doing annual cost of living adjustments rather than periodic jumps of. 8 to 10 or 15 percent and so we're going to be trying to communicate with folks in the community and I just thought I'd take advantage of the first public <laughs> attendance here to see who would favor the annual increases like cost of living adjustments as opposed to periodic 8 or 10 percent increases. Um, assuming that they're necessary and I haven't looked at your budget and I'm, I, I agree that I'm not going to sit around and listen to your budget, I think an annual cost of living adjustment is much better than a large increase every five or six or seven years. My, my thought is that it depends, but rather annual, and if it's somehow indexed and properly explained, as opposed to imposed and not transparent, that will go over well. And I think the, the one thing is, because in all of this discovery that we've been doing, we've learned a little bit more about you guys, and, but I gather there's a, you have an eight hundred thousand dollars surplus, so you'll have to explain the need. Yeah, let me let me stop there. <laughs> I just want to know all budgeting, all of our budgets are transparent and open for for discussion. I'm just wanting to know whether, as users, in knowing that the rates are going up, if you prefer periodic rates of ten percent jumps or annual rates of a percent and a half jump. Why don't you take on, on that on that order. So I'm just looking for a poll, trying to get some initial feedback. I that's think so an annual increase that's reasonable is annual, much easier annual. than annual. Yeah. one behind you. It's Thank just you. easier to budget as a household yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the last time we had a hearing, we got raked over the coals because we hadn't had a rate increase in like 12, 14 years. Yeah. And we said, well, we thought you'd appreciate it, but now we need to make an adjustment. So what you're saying, we're the easiest group you've ever dealt with. <laughs> no, no that's, that's kind of the response. I thought, as an individual user, I'd appreciate an individual cost of living adjustment, and that's what the Portland Water District does, and a lot of other places are doing it, and I think it's less painful to do it that it way. It is slow increases are a lot less yeah. painful yeah. than yeah. big jumps. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I didn't, no, mean thank to you. Depart, I didn't mean to depart from the agenda, but we had a, we had a quick solution. We're missing an opportunity that we don't answer your question a little bit. So what we have isn't a surplus. What we do is we set money aside every year to fund really, really expensive things that might be 10 or 15 years out. So it's not a surplus. They're reserve accounts that we have to put money aside for now. Because when we have to replace something big, it's not $800,000. It's $15 million. So it's not a surplus. It's dedicated to a specific use. And if you have more questions about that, come to any one of our no, meetings. No, thank you. Yeah, well. yeah. So, I, mean, I feel like it's important. No, thank, yeah. you. Sure. And so, thank you. And so by way of example, five years ago or so, we did a major construction project to replace pump stations. At Old County Road and Eastern Road. And that project cost three, three and a half, three million dollars. Yeah, almost four million dollars. We funded that with reserves. We did not have to go and borrow money. And at some point in time, borrowing money makes sense because interest rates are low. But we don't know what interest rates will be when we're trying to fund an eight million dollar or ten million dollar yeah. no, project. Helpful. Thank you. And if they're at fourteen to fifteen percent. We're better off having that money in reserve, and we and we try to incorporate that in our rate structure so that we don't have to hit the users up with you know additional debt, uh, principal interest payments on debt. So Can I ask a really dumb question? Can uh, those white things get painted brown? What white things? The things, those circles that we see it in the in the winter. 
the plate. Oh, across the marsh. The domes over the clarifiers there, the, the aluminum domes. Oh. oh, here in the plant? Yeah. Oh, at the plant. Yeah. yeah. You want them painted brown? Because in the, in the, all. Do you know how much it costs? <laughs> it's just $800,000. <laughs> we need, we need. I don't know how that would look. We need five engineers and one artist. <laughs> When something more transpires on the horizon cell tower uh, lease amendment, potential lease amendment, mm -hmm. um, if you will be discussing it again uh, at some meeting, uh, uh, is there a way that, um, because you mentioned one of your assistants is having a difficult time and the agendas are posted, mm -hmm. uh, can, not uh, not, uh, can we uh, get a few so people here? The mayor, uh, not he, went to, he went uh, to look at past agendas and uh, they weren't on the website. Really? Yeah. No agenda or minutes since yeah. March. No. What I'm asking is can we uh, get a couple of people on an email? What if we posted yeah. them? Well, yeah. well some, some way to. We distribute the, the uh, agendas to some specific people, and like the Press Herald gets it all the time. You know, we email it to them. I mean, I can add if, you to if that. you'd like to list. receive agendas, just give him your contact information, okay. yeah. and you'll get on the mailing list and you'll receive an agenda. Terrific. And you can talk to folks and let them know. Yeah, I'm at, for the maybe another person, too. For I think we should yeah. post okay. yeah. Yeah. I think you should get the agendas posted on the website, though. They, we were in the Wendy situation. They, Right, but we, need, but we need to. Yeah. So it sounds like they're, they're, we can send our email and ask to receive yeah. copies of the agenda. What's that? It sounds like we could send you our email. Absolutely. And, and okay. you would send us the copies of the agenda a couple of days, whatever you have. You might have most of your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And all the eloquent letters. So, the, the, as a matter of fact, I think if you check the website now, the, the, at least the agendas are already up to date. I was just not aware of it. You know, that was common practice. Yeah, it, it's not a criticism at all, honestly. We're just trying to figure okay. out. We, we literally found out two days ago that this was something you're talking about, which is why it's pretty extraordinary. You actually have this many people here that are interested. Well, I mean, Marvin had come over with the, the press, yeah. and I, I, I offered him up the information. No, no, no. We didn't, we, we didn't think he. would be more open, uh, generous, even helpful. Uh, there are no complaints. No, this has really been a, a pleasant experience, and thank you. Well, the conversation. The conversation. I'm glad you had a pleasant evening. Congratulations on retiring from the chairmanship. <laughs> Just in time. Another quick thought on the ten percent. What you're doing, if you wait for the ten percent, is you're subjecting yourself to the possibility. You probably discussed it that the other guys, who all those other taxing and charging authorities that they come with an ass that year oh, yeah, or a bigger ass that year and then you're all then yeah, yeah. so totally predictable will work every time. Cool. Listen, you guys are one of the better bills that I get. <laughs> 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 you're welcome at all our meetings. <laughs> It's actually very cheap. It is far less than a bottle of water. It's really important. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 so glad I got that septic system. Whoever, whoever wrote the letter to the editor, I can't remember who signed it Marvel. today, Marvel. talking about, about the atrocity of putting the treatment plant here on this location and devastating the marsh. Please remember the town was under consent decrees from DEP and EPA because the marsh was so polluted from malfunctioning septic systems at Prout Snack, uh, Black Point, Blue Point, Pine Point, that we are under federal directive to build this plant. And this plant at the time is the only plant in history of US EPA that had a full environmental impact statement done prior to the approval of, of the site and the construction of it. And it was very controversial on a town-wide basis, but the intent of putting it here was not to damage the marsh, but just the contrary, to, to, to take the all of this marsh. contaminated well, groundwater and make it You put it in deep way. ocean, and the, the difficulty with having to fight this in the press, so to speak, is that 
you signed a lease with a very tough customer, and they don't, they play hardball, and, and it, it's, I'm not saying we love the sanitary district, but I we, wish we, you would. We <laughs> all live here, and we know its value, but, and we're not opposed to anything about that, but we have, we are opposed to something that uh, Verizon is working very hard at attempting to do. I understand. Yeah, it's a tough company. Have, have but, you guys noticed how your, the cell phones all lose service right around the, the sewer plant? Do you think that's like a deliberate thing? <laughs> no, it's that, been that way. It's been that way forever. <laughs> I live on Del Terrace. I live on Del Terrace. I have no <laughs> cell phone service there. I have to use my Wi Fi. You're a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Come take a tour. Come on. We should encourage that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we should. We really should. All right. All right. So, budget summary. Uh, I have that was in, that was in the you know, executive session. The budget no, that, the, no. That, that, that you were no, it wasn't. Well, actually, it was, but it's but it's uh, yeah, right. it's public information because it was sent by Verizon to us. And copies are available. Budget. All right, right I'm lost. That's right. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is it possible to send some of the money to them that we expect them to charge us? No. no. I got a question. They probably can't cash the check anyway. Yes, we could, but I don't think that's. I don't think we can. We can't send money to a bill gonna, that hasn't been issued. Yeah, they're just going to apply it as a credit. I think we need a bill. No, 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 I, I wouldn't approve that. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it can be done. <laughs> so how do we determine what the actual fee is? I mean, they don't have they don't seem to have any rates or any metering to to justify a bill. How do they? They do. Pay? They do. The meter just is is reading artificially low, and so they're billing us for small amounts. So, but you're Much saying, what I'm saying is we, know what we can't go by past history. You, you actually needed a rate, you know, the meter had to be, be, be read during that time period to say, use this amount of, of energy. We don't have any record for that, so, I, I you know, it was like my water. No, I, I hear what you're saying is that there, there's no basis for them to bill us yeah. for past errors on their part, but I think I, there actually are. Well, sure they, they will go back to but, the previous year. And, but I'm not saying we should pay them anything. I'm just saying we should put that money aside so we don't have to find money in a budget. You know, let's not let's not roll that money forward and expend it on something else until until the whole issue with CMP is resolved. And then if that money's freed up and we know that there's no claim on it, then we can move it, move it into another fund. Yeah, there may not be a claim on it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Control. This is the right thing to do, definitely. Yeah. And Dave will find a way. Any other questions on the button? All in favor? None opposed. Uh, number nine, public comment. You heard them all. If they all go. <laughs> Anything you want to say? Let the record show. Let the record show. Let the record show that the public had an entertaining evening. Yes, they did, and they, they had their say. All right, so I, said, I, she said, I think they great. said pleasant evening. It was a pleasant evening. So, um, public comments are done, thankfully so. Uh, I'll take trustee comments. Jason. Uh, I'd like to start thanking Charlie for his uh, service as the board chair for the last two years, has it been? Four years? Two, 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 okay. two years. So, thank you very much for a job well done. Uh, congratulations to Nick and Ben uh, for joining back up with the squad. <laughs> being elected back in. Uh, pleasure to have you back and also want to thank uh, the public for coming tonight and voicing their opinion. And it's nice to have some folks here in attendance for once and uh, also thanks to, continued thanks to the staff for all their hard work and dedication to the operation of the plant. Cool. Charlie. Well, happy thank Thanksgiving. You. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I would have I would have run for a third year, but I think you all would have seen that as a power grab, so I figured it's probably best, best, to, best to step aside. So term limits, term limits. <laughs> let, let somebody else be in the hot seat for a while. Um, it is getting warm. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to all. Have a safe a safe uh, safe holiday. I can't believe it's supposed to get snow tonight. Usually it's Thanksgiving weekend that we get the first. Clark early, so I like that. Um, look forward to working with you, Nick, uh, under your chairmanship. I think it's going to be an interesting year. We've got, we've got some issues that we'll have to focus on, and uh, so there'll be some challenges. And I'm sure that you will definitely move us through those uh, through those pitfalls. I'm done. Thank you. Ben? Oh, I would like to congratulate uh, Nick on his election to the chair and also re-election as a uh, board member. Oh, that's right. I forgot to say. Getting the high count on the, on the, on the board. Oh, he beat you? He beat me. <laughs> Is this the first year? We both were. First year. We both were. And, and I want to thank Charlie for his, his uh, services as chair. He's been done a great job. Uh, and I'm glad you're here to help out along the way as well. And I'm sure I'm sure Nick will do a great job as chair. And happy Thanksgiving and have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Cool. Aubrey? All right. So thank you to Charlie very much. As one of the how many five engineers on the board, you and I are both the engineers. We're very different types of engineers. I'm retired. Well, but you're still an engineer. 
I'm not fooling anyone. Um, true, but we are very different types of engineers, and I have learned a lot by listening to how you or watching how you approach problems over the years. I'm not saying I don't agree with you, but I've learned a lot, and I think that's really valuable. I think it is. It is good that we have different types of people on the board. So I've learned a lot from you, and I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'll probably learn something from you. Uh, you. Sure you <laughs> um, and so I want to thank thank you for your service. Welcome back. Congratulations on your positions. And since we just had a room full of people, and I mentioned this at the end, I do want to remind the public that you know we have one of the most the, the most fantastic plants in the state. Our plant is pristine. We have very few odor issues. The quality of our effluent is beautiful. I mean, it looks almost like that. And I think a lot of people don't understand what wastewater looks like when it's treated. So I would like to encourage anyone in the public to come down and take a tour of the plant because um, you may be surprised by a lot of what you see and how much work and energy does go into treating the wastewater that our community creates as a whole. So what we discharge to the environment is way better than it even has to be by its permit. So come take a tour. Cool. Uh, just let you want you to let folks know that they should call and make an appointment to schedule a tour, not just one. Call and make an appointment <laughs> to have a tour. Don't just walk in, but please do it. Yes. I mean, I've been there when we've done tours of all different age groups, and I think people are really genuinely impressed with what they see. Yep. So please come. I am every time I go through the tours. Well, I want to echo all my colleagues' comments. Congratulations to Ben on your re-election. Charlie, thank you for your wonderful leadership as chairman for the past two years, plus all the service you've done for the sanitary district over the decades. I truly appreciate it. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I also want to follow up on Aubrey's comments. We are providing the lifeblood of this community by protecting the beaches and the marshes from what used to be. So I hope we can promote that message and, and s encourage more people to come down and visit and attend our meetings. They'll be enlightened. Anyway, on that note, safe and happy, happy holiday. I'll entertain my last motion of the evening. Will we adjourn? Second. All in favor? It's done.